this before, so so <laughs> this table and these chairs make this a whole lot easier because basically what we want to do is we want to empty our hearts as much as we can in the same way we would if you were sitting with us around our kitchen table and we were sharing from our heart about the goodness of God, who you are in Christ, and your journey with Christ. That's what we're going to talk about. So, we begin. <clears throat> who are you? Who are you like in Scripture? Are you a giant slayer? Maybe a little boy with a bag of lunch? <clears throat> Maybe you're a Downing Thomas. I am sometimes. For sure. Peter? I like Peter, because I'm a very impulsive like him, and so when I see him, it's like, okay, good. There's <laughs> somebody else like me. <clears throat> Maybe you're the disciple that Jesus loved. I pretty much was convinced he was Jesus' favorite. <laughs> How about Martha or Mary? <clears throat> you one of those? Jonah? You got a message and it's supposed to go that way. <laughs> You're heading that way. There's a lot of people in that boat. Oh, oh I didn't even think about that. <laughs> Gideon? You love God, you serve God, but you gotta have some assurance. And then you need more assurance. All these people were on a journey with God. <clears throat> Maybe you fit in there somewhere. <clears throat> Maybe you struggle to believe that God speaks or struggle to hear that he speaks. <clears throat> For me sometimes the struggle, I, I believe he speaks, but I'm like, was that you or was that me? I don't know. I don't always know. I'm getting better at it. <clears throat> Sometimes I don't think I hear correctly. I want to talk about God's goodness, His faithfulness to us. <clears throat> There's a quote, uh, if, if you get uh, Natasha's uh, blog at all, and she had a really good quote in there this week. Scripture says that before the foundations of the world, Oops, sorry, I'm not for the quote yet. Hang on, I'm ahead of myself. Let me skip to the quote. <clears throat> we know from the study of Scripture and the stories of early church fathers, the testimony of brothers and sisters in the Lord, that trusting the Lord can become our default, even can become our habit, but only if we cultivate it. Only if we cultivate it. <clears throat> a lot of people become believers because they heard about the goodness of Jesus and how awful hell is, and they'd rather not go to hell, so they made the choice. I think that's where I started. I definitely don't want to go to hell. Um, but there's more, there's a journey. And, and this is what I started to say a minute ago. <clears throat> Scriptures tell us that before the foundations of the earth, when, when God created the earth, before that, he wrote down a story with your name on it, and my name on it. And he had a, a plan. I don't know what that looks like for you. Uh, I'm learning what it looks like for me. And <clears throat> I'm pretty sure if he didn't write out second by second, minute by minute. I think it, it probably, I think it's an overview of, of what his plan is. And what we want to do today is, is it, ultimately we want to share some stories. It's always my favorite part. I can't wait till the preacher gets to the stories because that's when I wake up and come alive. And, I, and that's when I start to understand a lot of times. So... We're going to share some stories about being able to trust God. Most of our stories, or all of our stories, are around the area of finances. This is not about finances. 
This is about trusting God with who he is and his plan for you. For us, the period of time that we're going to share just happened to be about finances. So I'm going to read a scripture. It's from Psalm 9. I'm going to read a few verses from there. Uh, verse 1. I will praise you, Lord, with all my heart. I will tell of all the marvelous things you have done. I will be filled with joy because of you, and I will sing praises to your name, O Most God. And verse 11. Sing praises to the Lord who reigns in Jerusalem. Tell the world about his unforgettable deeds. So why are we going to share today? Because God is real, and we want to learn how to trust him. And because God wants us to share our story, maybe we share our story today. It's a picture of what God wants every one of us to be doing with our lives. Sharing our story. Sharing how God has met us, or how God has provided for us, or how God has helped us, maybe uh, through a hard time, or whatever, but I love that, because it says, tell the world about its unforgettable deeds, and you know, it's interesting, because in his unforgettable deeds, sometimes we forget, sometimes we forget about what God has done for us, and as I was, um, as we were preparing, I was thinking, it's so important that we revisit what the Lord has done. Now, we don't live there, but we revisit there to remind us that God is faithful and that he is He is good. So that's kind of, um, kind of what we're going to do today is just revisit some of the ways that God spoke to us and some of the ways that we listened and some of the times where we didn't really want to, but how that all played out when we did and some of that. So that's just that's kind of where we're at today, and we hope you'll be encouraged. I, I think you will be, because I've been greatly encouraged, and it's very fun, because we kept a book. Uh, it's, this is it. Yeah, all right. I kept a book <laughs> during a t period of time, which we're going to talk about, that God provided miraculously for us. And this book is right, it's this. And we started last night, I don't remember what time, doesn't matter, started reading through the way that God has provided for us, and a lot of your names, that are, a lot of you that are here even, are in this book because the Lord laid on your heart to do something for us. And it's here, and it's recorded, and it was just encouraging to realize that God cares about every little thing in our life. Want me to tell, tell the first story? Or you want to start? Go for it. Okay, so... We went through a really tough time financially when we started our monument business. And during that time, we had felt <clears throat> that we were not supposed to go necessarily and get a, a normal job, at least a full-time normal job. We had a business, and we were believing God to meet our needs through that. And that was a little, that in itself is kind of another story, and a little odd also, uh, in and of itself. But we were trying to be obedient to what we felt God was saying. And so because of that, we were in a really hard place and didn't have much money. And during that time, there were many times, and as I reviewed and looked through, that I had prayed for something, and then God provided it. So I wrote a few of them down. Um, we were, I was feeling like we needed toothbrushes. And we didn't have money to just go and buy it. Nowadays, we need a toothbrush to just go buy them. It doesn't even have to be the cheapest one always, even now, <laughs> which feels amazing. But at that time, we didn't have the money to do that. God was our provider, and that week after I prayed, someone gave us 20 toothbrushes. And we had four children, so six of us, so you know, that was, that was, an, abund that was an abundance. It was so cool. Another time, I prayed for hot cocoa. I wasn't telling people what my needs were or what I wanted. And sure enough, somebody brought us hot cocoa. Like Norma, who you guys all know here, was in need of a pair of jeans. We didn't have the money to go to the store and just buy jeans. That Sunday, we came out of church, and there was a bag of clothes. And what do you think was in there? <laughs> a pair of jeans. And who did they fit? He liked. And did they fit perfect? Yeah. Is our God good? Does he see? Mm -hmm. 
He knows our name. But here's a really, really cool one. This is one of my very favorites. We had friends that were coming over to our house. And that day or the day before, I had looked at our popcorn supply. Now, mind you, when we buy popcorn, we buy 50-pound bags, okay? <laughs> so when we're getting low, it's about a gallon of popcorn. I looked at it and said, oh, we're getting low. And I'm like, go buy more, right? So anyway, these friends um, came to our house. And when they got there, they said, oh, by the way, are you in need of popcorn? Because we kind of felt like impressed that we should bring this little brown bag of popcorn, and I said, you know what, you keep your popcorn, but God wanted to speak to me today, and he wanted to let me know that he saw me. He saw that I, even in my really abundance, a gallon is a lot of popcorn, but yet to me it was, a, it was getting to a place of lack, and he is so good that he laid that on somebody else's heart, to bring me popcorn. And it just ministered to me. And it was just, yeah. So the point I'm trying to make is that God knows me in intimately and he knows my name. And we know some scriptures, right, that back that up. Like he knew us when we were formed in our mother's womb. He already knew us. And he knew me in 1993, 94, 95, when we could provide for ourselves, but he provided in sometimes an abundance, and sometimes he provided something I really didn't even need, but I felt my heart again. So it was around that 1995 point, I was spending some quality time with my kids playing football. <laughs> And we had invited a family over <clears throat> to uh, play with us, and we were having a great time. And <clears throat> I got the ball, and I'm running this way, and realized I needed to go that way. And when I planted my left foot and went that way, it stayed there. And on the way down, I was screaming, I broke my leg. And I knew it was broke because I was holding two different parts of that leg. <clears throat> and somebody said, well, we can, maybe we can get you in the car. I said, no, I can call an ambulance. So we're not going to try to put me in the back seat of the car. <clears throat> it was bad. And I knew it was bad because I had broken before, and, and it was broke, but it wasn't so bad. But this one was, yeah, not good. I needed surgery is what I needed to properly put it back together. We didn't have money. We didn't have insurance. And... Um, the first blessing of God in that was when I went to the emergency room, uh, my friend, Doc Harney, was on. And the amazing thing was, is he was done with his shift, but he stayed with me for the next four hours and worked with me. He wasn't orthopedic, he was an emergency room doctor, but he stayed with me. And that was a lot of comfort. Um, I gotta tell this part, it just it makes me laugh every time I see it. Because we opted out on going for surgery, which meant going to Watertown, <clears throat> he had to be the one to hold my leg and line it up. So I'll never forget him looking, holding my toes, looking down at me, and the, the orthopedic doctor looking at it and saying, does it look okay? And he said, yep, looks good to me. And that was it, and they wrapped it up right there. That was putting it in place, so. <clears throat> Probably not proper medical procedure, but. <clears throat> It was done back then. That's the way it got done. So, like I said, no money. So how do you pay the hospital? Well, they let us make payments. And um, I remember, right before this happened, we were we were in there for something unexpected, right? That they had wanted us to come in for whatever, x or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. down the way, down the way in, in your recovery, you had had to go back in for x-ray. Yeah. So, another bill. Well, we went in one day, the next day, go out to the, to the uh, mailbox, <clears throat> get my mail. You farmers will recognize this. This is a check 
this is a check for selling five cabs. Well, I'm a monument guy, I don't have cabs. But here it is, five cabs, their, their numbers and all of that. And uh, so I called Jack LeMail and I said, Jack, I've got a check here for selling five cabs. Um, I don't have any cabs. He said, well, I thought that was a little odd. But uh, I said, so obviously somewhere there's a mistake. <clears throat> what do I do? And he said, well, I'll just stick it back out in your mailbox. I'll get it when I come by, pick it up later on today. <clears throat> so I did that, put it back in the mailbox, thinking I could really use that $360.85 for five cabs. <clears throat> An hour later, the phone rings and it's Jack. <clears throat> he said, hey, go out and get that check. That's yours. Somebody brought five calves and said, send the check to you. <laughs> Pretty cool. I want to read you somebody else's story along that same line. <clears throat> Shortly after Dallas Seminary was founded in 1924, it almost folded. It came to a point of bankruptcy. All the creditors were ready to foreclose at 12 noon on a particular day. That morning, the founders of the school met in the president's office to pray that God would provide. In that prayer meeting was Harry Ironside. When it was his turn to pray, he said in his refreshing, refreshingly candid way, Lord, we know that the cattle on a thousand hills are yours. Please sell some of them and send us the money. <laughs> Just about that time, a tall Texan in boots and, and an open collared shirt strolled into the business office. Howdy, he said to the secretary. I just sold two carloads of cattle over in Fort Worth. I've been trying to make a business deal go through, but it won't work. And I feel like God wants me to give that money to the seminary. I don't know if you need it or not, but Here's the check, and he handed it over. The secretary took the check, and knowing something of the critical nature of the hour, went to the door of the prayer meeting and timidly tapped. Dr. Lewis Sperry Schaefer, the founder and president of the school, answered the door, took the check from her hand. When he looked at the amount, it was for the exact sum of the debt. Then he recognized the name on the check as that of the cattleman. Turning to Dr. Ironside, he said, Harry, God sold the cattle. <laughs> it's a good God that we serve. And whatever your journey is, he already knows where you're supposed to go, and he knows how to get you there. Another story. It's the like kind of mentioned it, it. What amazed me was God doesn't just supply our needs. He does, but He's a generous God. He's overwhelmingly generous, and sometimes it's our wants. I'm a deer hunter. I always like venison. But I didn't love venison. I love beef. I like the texture, I like the taste. There's fat in beef. And it just makes it better. It makes the taste a lot better. <coughs> so I was actually complaining to God one day, and I just said, Lord, I have not had any beef in a long time. And I appreciate the deer. I'm thankful that for that. I don't mean to be complaining. I really, I'd really like some beef. I really would. <clears throat> We've already, at that point, we're kind of into this journey a bit, so I know it's it's okay to talk to him about what's on my heart and ask him for things that I need or things that I want. He wants me to do that. He's a good dad. <clears throat> I don't know how much longer after that prayer it was, but one day, I knocked him on the door, and there stands a local family, beef farmers, mother and three children, and they all got big, heavy boxes full of prime, not, not some old dairy cow that we're not milking anymore. This was raised for beef. And I felt a little bit guilty 
just for a second when I'm out <laughs> on, my, on my porch and I'm cooking a steak that I know is not going to fit on my plate. But that was amazing. Even more amazing, I think, than that, along with that, was um, I decided to take uh, Corwin on a, a pre adolescent trip, and that was get away, have a weekend together, talk to him about some of the things that are coming down the, the pipe as a young man. And uh, so we went on a trip. And it was important to me, a couple things were important to me, is that, that he have a lot of fun, that we have fun together. And uh, I, didn't have a, I didn't have a truck worthy of getting down there. Bob Martin loaned me his truck. I've mentioned different times that just, we had a hoop. It was just, it was a nice truck, and it was just made part of that part of the trip just much more, more fun. And we put a couple bicycles in the back, and just the whole thing. <clears throat> well, when I got ready to go, we were going to camp out, cook some of our own food. I went to the freezer and I took out the last pound of ground beef. And I, the thought went through my mind, I'm probably going to hear it from her because she's been saving that for something special. But I knew we were going to cook hamburgers over the fire and there it was. So took the last pound of beef. The trip was four hours, four and a half hours away to the childhood home that I grew up in. Neighbors had bought that from us. They're dairy farmers, but they also raised beef cattle. When we got ready to leave from that trip, Lyle said, could you use any hamburger? Yeah, I didn't even have to pray about that one. <laughs> I think it was like you said, 60 pounds? 60 pounds. 60 pounds of hamburger. So... I think it might have been 62 pound packaging actually. It was a lot. It was a lot. That's all good and wonderful, but guess what? It was down there again a year, two, three years later. Went deer hunting. Didn't get any deer. Part of the trip was the fun of it, but part of the trip was we want to supply our own meat. We need to. And when we're ready to leave, guess what? Lyle says, we got a cow that's been butchered and the meat is coming and I don't have any room in the freezer to put her. This time he said, take boxes and get as much of the meat that's in the freezer out of it that you can. God has cattle on a thousand hills and he's not afraid to, to butcher them. <laughs> <laughs> Let me add one of those about meat. Uh, I have found in here that I have prayed. We had, this was another time that we didn't have any meat and needed meat. And that afternoon I got a phone call and someone wondered if we would mind if they brought us some meat. It was like some ham steak and 10 packages of hamburger that had all been done up and, you know, just, and on and on and on. On and on and on, right here. This goes on and on and on. Back to you. So there was a Sunday that I had prayed. August was needing tights, white tights. On Monday, I got a call to stop to a friend's house, and they said, uh, we have something for you if you could stop at our house. So I said, sure. I didn't know what it was. I got there, and it was two pair of tights, one white and one pink. Their daughter was too big, and they didn't fit her anymore or something, or weren't going to fit her, brand new, I believe, in the package. And uh, they fit August perfectly. Once again, God, God provided. He's just good at that. Now, some of this sounds kind of as you're, as we're telling that, even as we're thinking of it, we're thinking of all the positives, right? Just how amazing it was, how God provided miraculously. But what we haven't talked about so far is when you're uh, being provided for, it's because you're in need. And being in need is really not fun. It's really more, it's, it's fun to provide for yourself. It's nice to just have the money come in and you buy what you need. And so it wasn't easy. And I had just a very simple little spaghetti casserole in my freezer. I'm not, very, I'm not much of a cook. I, I, what I mean is I don't like to cook. Um, 
So obviously I put this away and it was in my mind and it's in that freezer. And I am glad it's there and I know I can use it as a backup if I need it, right? So somebody comes to the door that's struggling. And I know right away that the Lord is tapping me. He brings it to my head, but he's tapping my heart and he's saying, Delight, you know that spaghetti casserole you have in the freezer? I want you to give it. Now, I already struggle, and I don't know how many of you know, but I already struggle with being more of a person that's frugal. I'm always working at learning to be a giver. Yep, I want a tree. And yeah, true. And so it's something I'm always working at. But in the middle of that need, I, I, I just really was struggling to give that casserole, you know? It's just a casserole, you guys. Looking at it now, I think, how ridiculous. But I did it. I was obedient. And you know, I think so many times, doesn't God prick our hearts and say, boy, would you do this? Or could you do that? Or, you know, maybe a... Uh, I'm thinking about sometimes on Sunday morning when they mention that we need a children's story. Like, and I think, I don't want to get up there. You know, it's hard for me to do that. But yet when God asks you to do something, if you're obedient, he blesses you. And this is what happened. So I gave that casserole, right? Lady went out the door with a casserole. And that week, we got a phone call from um, friends of ours. And they invited us over. And it wasn't people, I think we were only at their home as a family one time in our life. And so they called and invited us for dinner. And when we got there, what do you think they were serving? <laughs> yep, spaghetti. But we didn't just get a spaghetti casserole. It was spaghetti, meatballs, bread, salad, dessert. And guess what? I didn't even have to clean it up. <laughs> I gave a measly little casserole. But the God of abundance mm. gave, and that was really a lesson to me, that, that really, if we'll be obedient to what God is asking of us, he will provide. Better late than never, we've all heard that. <clears throat> uh, back to the broken leg story. Um, I don't know if you remember in, in Lowell, there was, a, there was a dollar store called Dr. Dollar. And uh, I was in that store and, and we had been, I don't know if, all, if everything had been paid for or whatever on our payments, but for this broken leg. But <clears throat> I'm in the store and I see somebody uh, that I knew and talking to him and, and uh, he you know wondered how you doing and, and I don't know the subject of my leg having been broken came up and uh, he said you know I've been putting this off the Lord told me to give you fifty dollars and and I just I just had none, had none and he opened his wallet handed me fifty dollars which I appreciated I'm, you know and it was it was just the beauty of that was his obedience, and many times our obedience is not immediate, and that's a place we need to get to, but his obedience was still there. He was faithful to do the thing that he was supposed to do. Along with that story, interesting, this guy, he was a, a brother in the Lord, went to a local church. There was a lady from that same church. Maybe you should tell this part because you know the details. Yeah, the neat thing about that $50, by the way, is that that was the last $50 that was owed on that broken leg bill. That was the, the, we owed $50. And when he gave that money, we were able to go and, sit and pay that off. So that was really cool. So I was sharing, of course, uh, like I do, because I'm a big mouth. I was sharing with this lady at swimming one morning. And uh, just telling her about how we had been blessed. Uh, and just just give, sharing the stories, right? Sharing the goodness of God. Sharing about that, that $50. And, and maybe I didn't even say the amount probably to her. But just that it was the last money that was owed on this bill. And how, you know, again, God sees and, and he cares. And interestingly enough, at the time that Curtin broke his leg, this lady who also went to another local church but knew us, had felt impressed that she was supposed to bring us, I don't remember what, some 
It doesn't matter. Maybe if I had it written down here, I think. Maybe I'll just put it in the kitchen goods, not necessarily food. Anyway, whatever it was, she said to the Lord, well, they wouldn't even go to our church. Like, could I just give it to somebody in our church? Like, there's a lot of people in our own church that have needs, and so that's what she did. But when I shared that story with her that morning, it convicted her, and she felt like the Lord said that was good that she gave what she gave, but that it wasn't obedient, and that God had asked her to give money to send it on away. And so then she felt like better late than never. And, and I don't even know what it was, but anyway, sent some stuff our way. But you know, I just thought that was so cool because God's a redemptive God. Like even if we don't obey, sometimes he'll bring us back around. And he's brought me back around different times when I haven't listened immediately or whatever. And that, that's how we learn, right? That's how we learn. Yeah. Amen. <laughs> our, our story is could be written off as, well, it's just how it worked out. You know, people care for people, and it's on their heart, and, and all of that. Um, it's nice it worked out. But I want to take you back now to the, towards the beginning of our journey. And we were very fortunate in the church that we were in at that time. There was a lot of teaching and a lot of experience about the prophetic. And I'd never been around personal prophecy. In my mind, prophets were somebody in the Old Testament. And whatever it was talking about in the New Testament, I didn't understand and didn't experience. But I got to experience what it means when God speaks to you personally through a prophet, through someone that has prophetic giftings. And I'm going to have you like read the beginning of that story that, I, that we just started telling you about. So this man, prophet, or it was prophetic, shared this over us. This was then back in 1993. Most of this book is written between 94 and 99, I think. I see, now this man didn't know us. That was the other thing. He didn't know us. God knows us, but he didn't know us. I see the money. I know the situation. And the Lord does say unto you, I am your provider. The Lord says unto you to lift your vision higher. You have known in the past that I have been more of a provider than just a paycheck. You know there are multitudes of ways that I shall bless you. I shall bless your ingathering. You know, they, they, um, they spoke in King James kind of when they prophesied, just so you know. So it, it's written that way, and it's a little uncomfortable. I don't talk that way. Or even well, think that way. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I shall bless you in areas that you have never seen possible. For the Lord does say unto you, I do see the destitution at times. Lord, where will this money come from? Where will that be? And you have seen my handiwork. But I, the Lord, would speak unto you this day that as you are faithful stewards with your money, as it is brought in continued subjection and you do delight, even in blessing the house of the Lord, even in faith that the Lord does say unto you, I shall multiply. Surely, as it would seem at times that bills in your life would be multiplied, the Lord would say, I shall bless your provision. It shall be your provision that I shall multiply, saith the Lord. It shall come unto you of avenues that you have never expected. Be cautious not to close doors, but rather to stay in submission that I may bless you. Let not pride enter into your heart to stop the giving. For surely I shall even lay it upon men and women's hearts, and I shall lay it on others to give unto you things, to give unto you money, to give unto you groceries, to give unto you various things at various times. Fear not, for I am your provision, and I will provide adequately even for your children. For yes, fear not, for surely the Lord, your God, do see your children, and I see your desire that they would not go without. 
The Lord says, trust me even with your giving, and I shall be faithful in multiplying what I give unto you. For surely, if I am able to provide even loaves and fishes for 5,000, can I not provide miraculously for you? It shall be unto you as an example in this house of my provision, but first will come by your stewardship. And in doing so, I shall multiply and in gathering into your house, says the Lord. And I couldn't help but to think of this morning. I, mean, I, was, I got a big smile on my face when, I, when the Waymaker song went up. Because that's just Waymaker, Miracle Worker, Promise Keeper, Light in the Darkness. This wasn't easy, you guys. We're telling the good stuff. It was hard. There were many, light, dark, many dark nights of struggle. My God, that is who you are. Waymaker, Miracle Worker, Promise Keeper. Light in the darkness. And that's, that's who he wants to be, not just for us and our story, but for every one of our stories. See, we all have a story. We all have something. It's one of the beauties of getting a word from the Lord, getting prophecy from the Lord that I learned was it gives you legs to stand on. We knew we were on the journey that God wanted us to be on, but things weren't lining up. Right. You start a business, you expect that, okay, I'm gonna sell something and money's gonna come in, and so therefore I can provide for my family. Um, the hard part that she talked about, some of it for me was the middle of the night when I'm thinking, because I didn't do my worrying around with her because she did enough for several of us. And so I kept my worry to myself many times but between me and God and I would just say God you said that money would come in I don't see it but I'm going to trust you because I believe that you don't lie I believe that, that when you speak to my heart I can start down that path I can, I can bring what you said back to you which I did I did many times. I picked this up and I said, God, help me out here. This is what you said. Here's my needs. And it didn't, didn't always happen in the timing that I would like it to happen in. But I can honestly say it happened. So, what's your journey? Do you know the plan? Do you have an idea where you're headed? Are you afraid of it? Are you excited about it? Have you started on it? Did you start on it and get stalled? Or maybe you're, you started on it, you stalled out and found out I'm in the mud and now I'm stuck and I can't get out of it. I've been there. I've been stuck. You can trust him. You can trust him. Scripture says that if, if you will turn towards him, if you will call on him, he'll meet you. It doesn't say that if, if you are perfect and you have everything all lined up, then he'll meet you or then he'll speak to you. It just says if you turn to him, he'll meet you. Brian talked last week about <clears throat> imparting spiritual gift, spiritual things, by the laying on of hands. I, my expectation, what I feel from the Lord is, there's people that are struggling in their journey, or there's people here that, are, that, that need to get their journey started, or whatever it is. And so, I'm just, I'm wrapping this up and I'm saying, if that's you, your first step today is take a step of faith. Come out of your chair. Let us pray with you.